Hey guys, welcome to Coding with Tanya. This video is a tutorial about basic Linux commands and a general introduction to Linux. So before we get started, what exactly is Linux? You've probably seen its cute penguin logo plastered somewhere before. In simplest terms, Linux is an operating system, just like Windows and Mac OS. Operating systems are softwares that manage all of the hardware resources associated with your computer. They're essentially programs that let you interact with your device. They allow you to tell your computer to do things. In this video, we'll learn how to interact with our computer using Linux instead of Mac OS or Windows, which you're probably definitely used to. Now, why should you care about learning how to use Linux when you have the beautiful UI of Mac OS and Windows OS? Some of my classmates in the past have compared using Linux and the terminal to being a caveman. And yes, it might feel like that in the beginning, but once you get the hang of it, it's quite straightforward and very useful. Now, the simple reason why it's useful is because it's a must-have skill. It's a popular operating system that powers Androids and other devices. So knowing how to work around the Linux system is handy. Whether you're using this video as a resource to pass a class or build a project, you are in good hands. To work with Linux, you must first learn how to use a terminal. The terminal is also known as a command line or console. It is an interactive program that allows you to type in commands. Commands are lines of text that are interpreted as instructions to control your computer. The terminal is a great tool because it gives you more control and access over your computer. Now let's get a basic overview of the terminal anatomy. When you first open the terminal, you will see the following prompt which is composed of the username, the at symbol, the host name, the path, and the cache symbol. The username is the username of the currently operating user. The host name is the name of your computer. The path is the location of the directory you're currently operating on. Quick important FYI, when you're using Linux, what we traditionally refer to as folders are known as directories, so you'll see them being used interchangeably. So you might have noticed that the path is a squiggly line. The squiggly line is called a tilde, and it's a shorthand for the path of your home directory. Finally, at the end of the prompt, you will usually see a cache sign, which signifies that you're operating as a normal user. Now let's show a demonstration of moving around directories in a normal UI that we're all used to. Okay, let's say I'm on my computer and I'm using my Finder if you're a Mac user or Windows Explorer if you're a PC user. Without using the Favorites tab, how might we navigate around the hierarchy of folders to get access to our images? When we first open Finder, we will usually be in our home directory. Mine is named Tanya. I know that my photos folder is inside documents, so I go ahead and open the documents folder. After clicking, I'm able to see all the contents of the document folder, which includes the photos folder. I go ahead and click on the photos folder to access its contents. And voila, here I am with access to all my photos. That was pretty easy and what we've been used to doing our whole lives. We can go ahead and trace the path we took to get from the photos directory, which started out with our home directory, Hanya, and then to documents. And finally, photos, which gives us the final path of users slash Hanya slash documents slash photos. Now let's repeat what we just did using the terminal. In order to do this, you will need to learn a few commands. Here's a list of the top 10 essential commands, which includes the following. There are so many more useful commands, but these will do more than just get you by. PWD will let you know which directory you're in. 
LS will show you the contents of your folder. CD will let you change directories. RM will allow you to delete files in a folder. MKDIR will allow you to create a new directory. RMDIR will allow you to remove an empty directory. CP will allow you to copy files and directories. MV will allow you to move directories and files. CAT allows you to display the contents of your file. Now let's put these commands to use. So here we have the terminal on the left side and the file viewer on the right side to give a visual equivalent of the commands we're calling in a regular interface. The first command we'll be using is PWD. As a reminder, PWD stands for Print Working Directory. This will essentially tell you your location in the folder hierarchy or your path relative to your root. And after calling PWD, we can see that our home directory path is user slash Hanya. PWD is useful when you're not sure where you are or quickly need your path, especially if it's long. The next command is ls. ls stands for lists and displays all the contents of a given directory. Using ls, I can see that my home directory contains the favorites, desktop, downloads, and document directories. The next and most useful command is cd. cd stands for change directory. The command allows you to move from one directory to another. You just have to call cd followed by the folder you want to move to. In order to see our full path from the root, we can call pwd again. This will also confirm that we have successfully changed directories. And it worked. Our new path is users slash Hanya slash documents. So if you remember your commands, you'll know that ls will display our contents. So after calling ls, I can see everything in my folder and there's the photos folder. Now I call cd to change directories and access my photos folder. And pwd to confirm and check my path, which is users slash Hanya slash documents slash photos. To see the contents of the photos folder, I call ls. And voila, here are all the images accessed using the terminal. Now that we have the basics down, let's play around with the other commands. The next and super convenient command I'll show you is the clear command. The clear command basically wipes out your terminal and gives you a nice clean slate. And there's our clean terminal. So before we move on, notice how there are no directories within the photos folder. This means that we can't CD into any folder. This illustration gives a clear view of our folder's hierarchy. CD can only be called to access folders under a directory. Since there are no folders under photos, we would need to jump back to documents, which photos belongs under. The command to help us with this is cd dot dot. cd goes back from a folder to the folder before that. A visual demonstration will make it easier to grasp. The first dot shows the current folder, which is the photos directory. The second dot represents the folder above it, which is a documents directory. So after calling pwd, I see that I've successfully moved backwards and am now in the documents folder. I'm going to view the contents of the documents folder by calling ls. The documents directory contains the following files. Let's say I'd like to create a new directory within documents called code to put in all my source codes. I would use the command mkdir followed by the name of the folder I'd like to create. It's the equivalent of going to the menu and creating a new folder. It's faster with the terminal though, because you're able to create and name the folder at once. mkdir stands for make directory. I call the command ls again, and there I see the code folder has been successfully created. Now let's say we want to get rid of a file. We want to get rid of ticket.pdf specifically. We'll call the rm command followed by ticket.pdf to do that. 
RM stands for remove and it only works on files. Now using LS, I can check that the ticket file was successfully removed. And here I see it's gone. Now remember how I mentioned that RM only works on files? Let's try calling RM on the readings file and see what happens. And as expected, I get an error message telling me that readings is a directory and hence RM cannot work on it. So if RM doesn't work, what do we do to remove a folder? Now we can try rmdir followed by the directory name. rmdir stands for remove directory. But again, there's a catch because it'll only remove a directory if it's empty. And the terminal issues a warning telling us that readings is not empty and hence rmdir will not work. Now don't worry, there's one more removal command that we can try. rm-r followed by the directory you want to delete. RM-R stands for recursive remove. The R stands for recursive, which deletes the folder and all the contents inside of it, whether they're files or folders. Let's call LS to check that the readings folder has finally been deleted. And voila, it's finally gone. Now my next goal is to move the file resume.pdf into the projects folder. To do this, I call the move command followed by the file I want to move and the destination I want to move it to. Note that the move command is not only used to move files and documents, but to rename them as well. Now let's check that the resume file has been successfully moved to projects. So when I call ls, I don't see the resume folder, which means it was moved. We can double check this by seeding into projects and listing the folder's contents. Okay, now remember how we said move can also be used to change a file or directory's name? To do this, you would call move followed by the current file or folder name and the new name you want to give it. In this case, I'm renaming my homework folder death because homework really is death. Now we call ls again to see if the homework folder has been successfully renamed. And there we go, we can see that homework is now renamed to death. I'm going to clear the screen and try to go back to the desktop which is located in the home directory. I'm going to use cd because it's a shorthand to get me to the home directory from any folder. cd dot dot will also work because if I go backwards up one folder, I can get to Hania the home directory. From my home directory, I can cd into desktop and call ls to see the contents of the folder. So in desktop, I have the games and code folder and two files, hello.java and server.python. Let's say I want to read hello.java without the hassle of opening the file using an editor. To do this, you would call the cat command followed by the file you want to read. Cat is short for concatenate and it displays the contents of a given file. And here we go, a display of hello.java. I usually call cat when I'm quickly trying to view a file or copy stuff from a file. Okay, now the next thing we should try to do is copy hello.java to the code directory. We do this by calling cp followed by the file or directory we want to copy and the location we want to copy it to. Pretty obvious, but cp stands for copy. Now let's cd into code and see if hello.java is there and lists its contents to check if hello.java was successfully copied. And here we go, hello.java is there. Okay, now let's also try to copy hello.java into the home directory, Hanya. So using the same syntax, we would call cp followed by the file and the location we want to copy the file into. But that won't really work because you can't copy a file using a relative path here. To understand why, we'll need to get a clear understanding of absolute versus relative paths. An absolute path is a path with reference to the root directory. A relative path is a path with reference to the current directory. To better understand these definitions, let's look into how the CP function works using absolute and relative paths starting from the desktop directory. If I want to copy the hello.java file to the code directory, I can simply use a relative path which references the current directory desktop. 
Since we're already in desktop, all I have to do is call cp, the file name, and the folder code. If I wanted to do this using an absolute path, which would also work, I would type tilde, short for the home directory, slash desktop, slash code. But as you can see, using the relative path is much easier in this case. Now let's cd to the code folder, which has the newly copied hello.java inside of it. Let's say I want to copy the hello.java from the code directory into Hanya, and I use the same syntax as earlier, cp, the file name, and the folder I want to copy it into. This is the same issue we had earlier. It can't work because this is a relative path. A relative path starts from the current directory, which is code, and moves down the hierarchy. If we look at the diagram, Hanya is above code as the root of the hierarchy. In order to properly copy hello.java into Hanya, we will need to use the absolute path by calling cp hello.java code slash user slash Hanya or cp hello.java code tilde for short. Now let's practice copying hello.java to other files. So the path of any folder under Hanya will always start with tilde slash followed by the folder name. If I want to copy hello.java to the favorites directory, I'll add favorites after the slash. If I want to copy hello.java to projects, I add desktop after the slash and then projects. And there you have it. You are now ready to use Linux and build whatever your heart desires. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope it was helpful, please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more.